let's hear from our, our brother and sister please say your name and everything you want to know thank you thank you thank you man thank you man of god um, my name is uh, Dingi, originally from Zambia, and uh, the lady besides me is my wife. Um, I'm here to testify. And uh, before I go to the testimony, I would like to start with the words that I heard from the man of God. 10 years ago. I'm just going to read a few points from those words and then I'll go to my testimony. I wrote a few words from that message and I'll, I'll, tell, you, I'll tell you the title at the end. But for now, I just want you to understand so that when I start my testimony, you know where we are coming from. So this is 10 years ago, the man of God said, what is the point of looking for more money when you cannot handle money now? Then he asked the question, how can you get ahead financially when you are already having trouble to handle money? Then he said, then he gave us a verse, Psalms 37 verse 25 says something like I was young and now I am old I have never seen the righteous forsaken then he said because of your earning you are now in debt because of your earning you are now in debt it is not that you never had money you did not have the spirit to handle money. A lot of people are oppressed because of financial worry. Many young people educated cannot get work because they are in debt. Nothing can rob a peace of mind like financial worry. When you are financially scattered. There is no peace. Learn from your mistakes and learn to handle money correctly. Today's society encourages debt. Why does Satan want you in debt? Because he wants you to be in bondage and constantly worrying. About to finish now. Don't go into debt if you can avoid it. Why does Satan want you in debt? All right, I repeated this statement. He wants you to be in bondage and constantly worry. You cannot worship. You cannot worship because you are preoccupied on how you can succeed. How can you, how can you budget with Satan and think you can succeed. In families, finances has put st strain on relationships. People who get into debt don't know how much is coming in and going out. Your income and expenses are like water, going in and out of the buckets with holes in it. Manage money well and live within your income. Be content with what you have. God will not pay your debts. You've got to pay them yourself. Taking service as an experience. Amen. All right. What I'm about to say, I just want to say something to say. Whatever we have involved ourselves in 
many times we tend to blame other people. I remember 15 years ago when I was young and I started working. I said to myself, like, I've started working. God has blessed me with a job. I desire to get married. I desire to have houses and all sorts. I had big dreams. And what had happened was I called one of my friends. It's 15 years ago we're talking about. I called one of my friends and shared this dream to him. And I told him, I said, but I don't know how I'm going to be able to do it. Because obviously by then, 15 years ago, my, my salary wasn't enough. And he said, I can. Now, he suggested. And that's why I said, whatever that you and I are passing through, it's not about somebody. He suggested. But at the end of the day, I made a decision. Just as the man of God has taught us, God has given us the power of choice. Then I said, okay, what can I do? He said, all right, I will take you to that man. We came to Johannesburg here. I never knew Johannesburg very well. We came here just after Carlton Center. So we went in the office. We knocked there. We found uh, there was a receptionist. And um, he, he, I can't remember his name, but uh, he said, we're looking for uh, this man. They said, he's not here. All right, we left. He went home. I went home. So when I went home, I started thinking by myself. And I decided, I decided that I'm going to see that man. But this time, I went by myself. There was nobody. I went by myself. And I came here, I found the place. And I found the man. I spoke to him, I said, this is what I want to do. I've got dreams and all that. Then he says, I can help you. I said, okay, how can you help me? He asked me for three and a half thousand rands. And by then I did not even have that money. I said, okay, let me go organize. Uh, excuse me, you, you, you wanted, he said you help you to become rich or poor? To become rich. Yes. Thank you. To become rich. Because I told him what I wanted to achieve. He said, you must bring three and a half thousand rands. I did not have that three and a half thousand. I decided to borrow the three and a half thousand. So the money that I took to him was a borrowed money. I borrowed the money. I came back the following week. I gave it to him. We went in one of the rooms where there was a different apparatus that the spiritualists use. He asked me for that money and he bent it. He took the money, he bent it, the whole three and a half thousand, and I saw it being bent and it was ashes when the man finished burning he said speak what you want and I started speaking speaking I want this all sorts of things that we are dreaming of now I started speaking and speaking and speaking then what happened he said okay you are done just hold on here he went to another room he brought two trunks empty trunks he opened them he closed them. He said what he was saying. He said what he was saying. He opened them. And those trunks were full of money. Alright. They were full of money. And now, before I go further, I just want to also say what the man of God has taught us. That in life, there is no shortcut. Genuine success, there is no shortcut yes money is there but occultic money and he has taught us again to say when we look at people what they are driving what they are having it must not be something that must move us because we don't know what they did for them to acquire this 
I just wanted to say that on that before I go further. All right. I saw the money and they said, do you have a bag? I said, yes. She said, you're going to carry the money, but will it fit in that bag? I said, it won't. I said, I'll go. I'll come back again. He closed that trunk. He talked, he talked, he opened it. Then the, on top of the money, there was blood. There was blood. And he told me, I say, this blood must be cleansed. I said, okay, how, how will it be cleansed? He says, have you got 12,000 rats? Sure. So I went out, started calling 12,000, 12,000. There was nothing. Then he said, all right, I can make you a deal. I can make you a deal that you will never give birth. I'm going to have to have part of your private parts. That's the agreement. But you're going to have to come and renew after a certain time. Then I said, no, I can't do this. I can't do this. Um, I said, okay, it's fine. It's fine. Let's leave the way it is. I'm going to have to go. He gave me something to say, carry it. It was in my hand. So I was carrying it, walking. He just said, you must have it. But I went with it home and, but on the way I decided to throw it. I said, no, it doesn't help. It doesn't help. All right. So what happens now? After I borrowed that money, I ended up going to banks to borrow more money. Okay? I was in debt. That's before I knew the ministry. So I borrowed money. And when I borrowed at first, I was able to pay. But then it came a time where I could not pay. Because firstly, actually, when I borrowed money, I started living a fake life. I started living a fake life. So the only way I could maintain that life is by going to the bank, pay a bit there, and carry on to maintain myself. And by then, it was getting heavier and heavier. Now, I could not think properly because of these debts. I could not think properly. The debts now took me to alcohol. Because now, you hear voices that say, drink alcohol. For those of us that, that I alcohol or that, that I've drunk before, we know to say, when you drink alcohol, it makes you somebody who you are not. So that was helping me to forget about the debts. And by then it was not serious. My sister, young sister, was concerned about my drinking. Then one day, I remember very well, I was sitting home. I was drinking alcohol and she called me and told me. I just want to say now how I came to the ministry. She said, do you know Prophet Philip Banda? I said, no. Open on this channel. Look at him. I did. I watched the man of God. And uh, she said, he can go help you with alcohol. You know, I'm worried about you. So I said, ah. And this is the truth. I said, ah. But it doesn't look powerful. That's the truth. He doesn't look powerful. Because we all know how the man of God teaches. Slow, but there's power and life in his teachings. So I said, okay. Then one day, I said, let me, I, I came one time driving in my car. I parked outside here and I was drinking alcohol and I was looking at the building. I said, ah, will I get help here? I went. Then again, I said, okay, I will come to the ministry. But I will come drunk. 
So I remember that Sunday, I woke up, I drank, I was drinking, it was four o'clock. And I said, look, if, if nothing happens, then obviously I will never be helped. Okay, I came, I was sitting somewhere there. Now, what, 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 what puzzled me is this, when, when, when the man of God walked in, he came and he was coming where I was sitting. And he looked at me, he just looked at me and passed. And I started sweating. I started sweating. I went back home. I could not drink. I could not drink. I tried. I, I, I think I stayed for about a month without drinking. But again, I started. We have been taught in this place that deliverance takes time. But one thing for sure I knew was that help will come from this place one day. Okay. So I came to the mean, I came to church now and I heard about this message. So when I heard about this message, I was in debt. And by then to be honest, I had given up. I had given up about myself. So it was just a life of of alcohol. Life of alcohol. Life of alcohol. Life of alcohol, which messed me up a lot until I could not pay my debts. And I had borrowed from almost, I think, Afri uh, African Bank. Uh, there were three loans. APSA. Um, West Bank. Uh, FNB. And also these, some of these uh, small, small uh, things that lend money. I had borrowed money from that. And I could not pay. But I never, I never understood where my problem actually came from. So I listened to this message and I wrote it. I wrote it very nicely. I kept that book. And I could go into it, read, uh, read it a bit, go into it, and just like that. I, I never lost the faith of saving. I never lost the faith of saving. Because if you heard what I said here, he said, taking saving as an, as an ex experience, I started slowly but surely saving. But nothing made sense. I could save, yes. I could save, save just a bit, bit, bit. But when I get paid, the money is gone. You get paid today, three days, all the money is finished. Okay, then what did I do? I, 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 I spoke to one of the banks and then they told me, because I never even knew that there's this uh, uh, consolidation of money. Then they introduced me to one of the uh, companies that consolidate money. I joined them and they told me, you're going to pay, you're going to pay uh, uh, so much it's gonna it's gonna be less now you know i think we know what, yeah, what they do you're gonna pay less and when when they did that i was with them for about three three or four years and i was paying them to pay my creditors but actually i discovered that for one year they never paid my creditors and the interests were going higher and higher now my thinking now was like gone totally gone and what 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 could make me think properly but which was not right was alcohol because that's one of the things also that the enemy was using to to destroy me but by the grace of god it did not destroy me so She now came in the picture. About four, four years ago. She came in the picture. And she found me the way I was. And I was very honest with her to say, this is what I'm passing through. This is what is happening and all that. Then I said, I would like to invite you to church where I go 
and she said i don't think i can go to any church now because churches are too much they are robbing people money i don't want to go to church i said it's it's that's not the way that's not the church then she came she came for one service and we went home when when we left she she said something she said it was the first time she saw the man of god and she said you these problems that you are in and with what i heard from the prophet you should have been far and that touched me she never condemned me she never condemned me and said ah you are in debt and all that she said listen to that man i do not know him but what with what i've heard him say you can go far but anyway i was very stubborn i was very stubborn i did not listen to her i said look my life is finished my life is finished i've got debts that i need to pay for the rest of my life and i don't know how i am going to come out of this then she told me to say okay let's work together and i i, I think by the time i said let's work together i said no it's, you know what it's a waste of time let's leave each other we left each other she said i will wait for you whatever you do wherever you go i will wait for you because i can see something that is in you that you yourself cannot see and what i would like to say is this what did she see in me that did not make her give up about me same here in the ministry when we come what is it that the man of god sees in us every sunday encouraging us giving us the word of god never giving up what is it that he sees in us these are some of the questions that we need to ask ourselves there is something that he sees in us something that we were born with but when she came in here is how she came she said what you have we have to clear so that we build on a new foundation i said what do you mean she said first we start from the clothes i should make your wardrobe we sh- and we go to the car i refused i said that's not going to happen and again to look at it on a spiritual side of you man of god has taught us when we come here we come with a lot of issues he says he needs to uproot that and plant it but we refuse to uproot what we came with so she said that must go out so i refused we left each other and honestly speaking when we left i started having other relationships and one funny thing is this whenever i could be in a relationship i could i could see you know you can see whether somebody is serious or whether somebody has brought purpose in your life whenever i told them that me i am in debt some of them they could look down and i knew that this one cannot help me. i knew this one cannot help me. and i could go back to her and say okay i want advice give me advice she she could always advise me but through the teachings of the prophet to say look i have told you listen to what the man of god is saying all that you are passing through will be gone if you only listen i said no I, i can't i'm finished all right i said okay fine how are you going to help me she said let's find another debt counselor let's leave that one find another one but keep on saving what you have been saving keep on saving so she 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 did some researches and came to say i found another one i went into that again second one and by then months were passing and the debts the, the interest were just heavy and heavy 
and I could not think straight. It was only alcohol that was making me think straight, but after I'm sober, I'm back to pain. It was so much bad that in the end, I started listening to the messages of the man of God when he talks about women. And this is what I want to say, to say, ladies, you carry a substance that can change a destiny of a man. True. You, we carry a substance that changes a destiny of a man. The man of God said it there. It's a woman who makes up a man. It's a woman who makes up a man. And I said, you know what? I've done all what I've done. I'm going to go back to her to listen to what she says. And she said, let's start with your wardrobe. We cleared the wardrobe. It was the car now. Leave this car, we look for another car. What can we relate to? We can also relate with what the man of God has taught us. He cannot build on a wrong foundation. You've got to destroy that wrong foundation, then let him build. He has taught us again to say, this place is a hospital. A hospital for souls. But we have tended to be a place of beauty contest. A place where we are coming to show off. A place where we go borrow money, buy things and come and show off here. On borrowed money, debt money. It's time we got real. It's time we got real. We've got a man of God here who's leading us to salvation. We've got a man of God who teaches us truth. Seek ye first the kingdom. Follow me as I follow Christ. Not the man of God who gives us empty promises. And every time, every time something happens, somebody can testify this. Every, every time something happens when we are out, we always remember the voice of the man of God. We don't remember voices that told us there will be 1,000 or 1 million in your account. No. We don't remember. We don't hear those voices. And I went. We, 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 we started. We started. Uh, we, I joined that debt review company. And they again helped me. But the interest were too much. It was too much. In 2017, 2018, it just became too much. I was drinking heavy and heavy and heavy. And one thing I want to say before I go further, I just want to say this, that debt is contagious. Debt is contagious. We need to be mindful of who we debt. D-A-T-E. Why do I say this? Man of God has taught us. You cannot give what you don't have. You cannot give what you don't have. She was very innocent when I met her. No debts. Clean. And she came to me. What does, what, what does the man of God mean when he says you cannot give what you don't have? If I don't have a 10 rands and she asks, if I don't have it, I cannot give it to her. If I've got it, I can give it to her. But the time she met me, I had debts. So what did I give her? Debts. Now it's double impact. The man of God says, she asked me for advice. I did not give her proper advice. I said, let's go borrow. She borrowed. By the grace of God, she was not 
uh, she managed to pay. We, we paid, we paid, we were paying. And yeah, but you hear where it ended. It's contagious. She was in debt as well. 2018, I wrote an email to the man of God. A very huge email. He assigned Pastor Summer to me. No, it was 2019, sorry. He assigned Pastor Summer to me. By then I was finished because even in my email I'd said, no, I've given up. It's, it's finished. He assigned Pastor Summer to me who called me, spoke to me here. He asked me about the lady. I said, okay, I'll, I'll call her. We sat. Now, look at the challenge that came. Pastor Summer told me to say, you're going to have to do the right thing. I said, okay, what's that? You need to pay Lobola. I said, and he asked, have you got money? I said, no. He said, I'm giving you two or three months to raise up the money. You know what to do. I went, we sat down and we said, okay, what do we do? She told me to say, I have told you, you are in a place where there is a man of God who, when you follow him, your life can change. What do we need to start with? We need to downgrade. Downgrade so that we save money. I said, no, no, no. He said, we have to. Okay, how do we do that? You have to go to a room where you can pay less and all that and all that. Then we save this money. So I looked, I, I, I looked at, uh, we, we looked, we discussed, we said, okay, it's fine. We have to. We started looking for a room, but now it's in a township. And we found this, I, I actually, I was driving around until I found it. And this place was, it was very bad. It was very bad. But, but, but let me say something because out of that, and before I say that, man of God has taught us between a promise and a provision, there's a problem. And I remember these words. I say, okay, there is a promise here that I need to get married. But this is a problem now. How am I going to stay here? Do I look at the problem or do I look at the, uh, the provision? I decided to look at the provision. She encouraged me. She encouraged me until the money was raised. And we went. Lobola was paid with two pastors who were very, very happy and impressed. And it was very nice. And very nice. Then, what happened now? After the Lobola, I started receiving emails from the bank, from the, 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 debt, re, the debt review, to say your banks want to take the issue to court. So it's going to be a tough situation. They want to increase the money. And, you know, reality really started kicking in now. To say, what am I going to do? So all I did was uh, drinking, drinking, but it never helped. And uh, I told her, I said, okay, the money that has been, been saving up, we're going to have to, I request that we take it out so that we see what's going to happen. But I don't think whatever is saved up, it will be able to cover the debts. But I don't know. Now, I just want to say something that, uh, you know what the prophet has told us to say, that for God to come through you, you need to come to the end of our, uh, yourself. You need to come to the end of yourself. I think in the 11 years of me being in this ministry, Honestly speaking, I've been fake. I've been a fake person. I've been a fake person. I did not know what to do. Until those emails were heavy. That this 2020 we had to go 
to the courts and all that. And uh, this is what happened now. This is what happened. I had to, a message of the prophet said, came to my heart and said, where I don't know if we'll remember, pray the whole night without closing your eyes. You'll see what God will do. So I said, I'm going to do that. But now I had to, that was coming to the end of myself. Because everything that I have done since I've been here, it's not things that have come for counsel. It's things that I've just been doing. I have money. I'm going to do this. I have money. I'm going to do this. I prayed that night. The whole night. I said, Lord, I have given up everything. Take over my life. Man of God has declared the Lord in 2018. Please let me be part of that. This was my prayer the whole night. And when it was in the morning, I gave her a call. I said, I want to see you. I said, I have prayed. And what is in my heart is, let me approach the banks and see how they can help. But the money that has been saved up, let me take it and we see if we can pay. Now, this is what I did. I took my problem and put it to God and let God do the rest. That's how I gave up. And I went to her, I told her, then she said, no, can we see the man of God first? I said, no. The, I told her, I said, the reason I'm asking you is there's so many things that you've told me. And if you give me a go ahead, man of God in the spiritual realm has given a go ahead. You are my wife who makes us, who makes me. And you have made me. And she said, go ahead. Then I went, I, I, I went okay, to the bank, checked out the money that was there. And uh, I approached the banks. And mind you, the money I was saving for, I wanted to buy a car. My dream car. Range Rover. <laughs> Range Rover. And when I saw them, when, when, when I went to check, okay, how much has been saved up, I started looking for the car. But I'm like, no. I must buy a car, then still carry on. No, no, I'm not going to do this. I went to the banks. I actually uh, went with her. We went there. I spoke to them, spoke to them, spoke to them to say, I cannot manage to pay this money. And this is what we are talking about is hundred thousands of rands. It's not Mickey Mouse money. And, uh, it's, it's, and it's, it's money that I could have paid until I got to the grave. It's not money that I could have finished. This money I could have gone to the grave and the people that I left behind could have suffered. And uh, I said, okay. They gave us letters. Each bank gave us letters of what we must pay. And then we went, we sat. And when we calculated, we actually realized that we had saved more. Then I was like, okay, we can pay the debts. My wife, we are free. We are free. On the 13th of December, man of God had told me to say, alcohol will kill you. So on the 13th of December, I said to alcohol, I'm going to drink you for the last time. Ish. Actually, not knowing that day that she was praying for me also the whole night. Now, look at what happened. When I drank, I drank alcohol. Then I went to work in the morning. I went drunk. 
and there was so many voices that was coming and I ended up hitting somebody on a motorbike. Then the voices of the man of God came. And that's when I also prayed there by the accident scene. Lord, help me. And by then, she was praying for me because when I called her, actually, she was from prayer. You're not going to believe what happened when that man woke up there. He woke up limping. He said, let's go to the police. I said, look, me, I'm <laughs> finished. Me, I'm finished. If you take me to the police, I'll be locked up. I don't know what to do. Then he said, just fix my motorbike and we leave it there. I said, Lord, thank you. And that's where I vowed to say, I will never drink alcohol anymore. After that, we went, we paid all the different banks. These are all different people we owed. I owed, actually. Started paying. So we started doing transfer on my phone. And one of the, one of the last one that we needed to pay, which was uh, uh, FNB. There was an issue there for the people to, to send us a letter. And in my, then I started saying, because we were sitting in a mall. Then I started saying, no, let's go. We'll do it tomorrow. She said, no. Actually, what was in my heart was that this money, I need to go pay for the car. And I was praying that it must not work. She said, until it works, let's phone the banks. By the grace of God, we phoned them. Everything went through. We paid. And I want to say this today to say, Actually, after we paid that, I told her, I said, there's extras. Let me go pay all your debts as well. Then I paid it. She was clean. Uh, after, after that, after my last payment, when I pressed my last payment, I saw it. Something lifted off. What can I say? I have worked for almost 20 years for nothing because of pretentious life. A man of God has taught us everything to adjust and all. He has never taught us you cannot have good life. He has taught us we can have good life. But let's do the right thing. Today, I'm here to announce that I am debt free. I am here to announce because this, there's been discouragements before that it does not happen here. It does when you listen. And I, I, let, let, let me just say something. I did not know what God had for me. 2019, there was a lot of temptations. Actually, December, uh, uh, was 2018 December, when I went to... And look, at, and, and this is what I want to say. We don't need to blame other people. Other people will bring suggestion. But it's up to us. Somebody brought a suggestion, 2018, that where you are, it does not happen. Go where it's happening. Those dates that you are in will be gone. I left, I left and I went for a month. There's no place like here. No, there's no place. And to be honest, I just want to say this. Yes, I've moved out. I've, 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 I've stayed away from church and not going to other ministries. This was the first time in 2018 that I had to go somewhere. But I have moved out. The reason why I've moved out is because of the truth.
that's in this place. That's the reason we move out. We don't move out because it does not happen. It happens when you obey. And I said to myself, when I told her we paid, I said, from now on, we need to seek counsel from the man of God when we want to do everything. What the man of God says, where we are coming from is long. Where we are going is short. That humbled me. It humbled me. And one thing I want to say is this. When we went back and looked at the money and said, if we start in 2020, in four years' time, this can be recovered. Now imagine had I listened then, where was I going to be? Same you, had you listened then, where were you going to be? It is now, people, it is now. And what I'm saying is, let's be real. It is now, to be honest, that I came to the end of myself. And by God's grace, man of God says, where you are going, it's short. I said to her to say, let's follow. Who knows? God can stretch that. So this is what happened in my lifetime. So I asked the man of God to say, I, I need to be prayed for because of the place where I went to. Which comes to what he has taught us. Cause and effects. There's no effect without cause. Whatever is happening, you and I caused it. There's no one to blame. I cannot blame my friend. He just introduced the place to me. That's it. The decision to go there was myself. You're here. 